Prior to joining the current administration, Secretary Perry was governor of Texas for 14 years. Under his leadership, the state of Texas became a U.S. leader at job creation, innovation, and economic growth. Last March, during Sierra Week, one of the largest global energy conferences worldwide, it was very inspiring to hear Secretary Perry share his views on America's new energy era and how a strong commitment to energy security and innovation has enabled the U.S. to produce energy not only in more reliable and affordable ways, but also in cleaner ways. While Texas leadership in the global oil and gas business is a well-known fact, few people are aware that Texas now produces over 15% of its electricity from wind and solar sources, which has contributed to achieving major reductions in carbon emissions over the last decade. At Ecopetrol, we share the Secretary's commitment to safe, secure, and affordable energy as a means for societal progress. To that effect, we work hand-in-hand -hand with national and local governments, communities, strategic partners, as well as other key stakeholders to establish and deliver on ambitious energy and environmental goals. As part of our growth strategy, we are seeking to responsibly develop our unconventional and offshore resources. The path undertaken by the U.S. provides us with valuable lessons. Ladies and gentlemen, a sustainable future depends on our capacity to embrace innovation, embrace dialogue, embrace cooperation, embrace the new energy era. Please join me in welcoming Secretary Perry. Jaime, thank you, brother. It's a pleasure. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Jaime, thank you very much. It is a uh, distinct honor to be here today and to uh, uh, be introduced by uh, my friend Jaime. And uh, I want to thank the good people of uh, Concordia for the uh, work that you've done here and, and uh, to make uh, this meeting possible, a summit if you will. Great to be in Bogota. It's the first time I've been here in 45 years, so it's time to be back. And um, it's uh, earlier today I had the opportunity to uh, meet with President Duque, and we had a great back and forth, and, and uh, uh, Minister Suarez, and uh, we actually signed a, uh, uh, a memorandum of understanding, a, a consequential agreement that um, uh, puts um, our, our, between our two nations, and this is a, a, a renewed partnership, um, and uh, th th this is a renewed partnership, uh, an energy partnership. It's going to complement uh, some of the strong security relationships that we've had uh, historically. Um, you, when you think about energy, security is critical, and it's critical um, to the security of, of, of America. It's for the security of the Americas, I might add, and uh, for that matter, Colombia and uh, the entire globe that we live in. Uh, today's summit brings to mind uh, one of the most powerful ideas of our time, and, and for that matter, any time from my perspective. If you want real security, if you want genuine security, then you have to support freedom within countries, you have to support commerce and cooperation uh, among those countries. When, when governments violate this bedrock principle, the results are pretty dismal. You don't have to look any farther than right next door in Venezuela. By any measure, Venezuelans are paying a terrible price for their government's behavior. It is incomprehensible that a once flourishing nation that possesses the world's largest oil reserves, this, it spiraled into this deep chaos. And as a result of the mismanagement and the, and the corrupt actions of Nicolas Maduro. What's even more incomprehensible is that nations like Russia and Cuba are supporting them 
in, in this chaos. The United States stands with Juan Guido. And, and we will continue to offer Venezuela, the people of Venezuela, the help that they need, the support that they need. Unarmed civilians being plowed down in the streets and without access to food, to water, electricity. That's a result of a government failing its people. But when governments respect the rights of their people, when they uphold free enterprise, when they make regulations the rules of the road rather than barriers blocking the road, they unleash a flood, an absolute flood of ingenuity and creativity. They unlock the awesome power of entrepreneurship. We stood right here on the stage and heard President Duque talk about what a powerful impact entrepreneurship can have. It produces waves of technology, breakthroughs that can literally change the world. And let me tell you, the breakthroughs that we've seen in energy are absolutely world-changing. They've created an unparalleled energy resurgence across the United States and parts of the globe. They're strengthening the ties that bind the Americas together. They're providing spectacular opportunities across the region as we develop our energy more wisely, more efficiently. And as we share our energy beyond this hemisphere, it can transform the rest of the world just as well. It, it can meet a forecasted surge in world demand, which is projected to rise by 50% by the year 2040. The United States has played a pivotal role in this great energy renaissance. And the reason is clear. We choose freedom. We, we believe in unleashing innovation. And much of this innovation took, took place in our national laboratories that the Department of Energy has the great privilege to oversee and to work with. It happened in places like my home state of Texas. When I was the governor, we kept our taxes low. We had a regulatory climate that was fair and predictable. We provided both the incentive and the freedom to innovate. And that's why we not only led the nation in energy development, but we became the leader in job growth. We saw well-diversified high-tech and manufacturing growing in that state. Because Texas was a place where we sent the message that we want your capital to be welcome there. That's a, that's a bumper sticker. Capital goes where it's welcome. We were able to recruit companies all across the United States to relocate. In, in the state of Texas during that period of time. And it was in my home state that we saw the dramatic breakthroughs in responsible development, hydraulic fracturing, directional drilling, that led to our natural gas boom. It was innovation. Innovation that not only made this technology possible, but other technologies as well, as well. I mean, uh, unleashing every fuel that we had from fossil fuels to renewables, the supply rose, costs fell, efficiencies increased, energy diversity exploded. Now, I bet most of you don't know that percentage wise. Texas obtains more of its electricity from renewable energy than 
the European Union does. I remind them that on a regular basis, by the way, when I go there. I say, I know you want to be like Texas. <laughs> but it's thanks to that innovative technology that the United States today is the world's number one producer of both oil and natural gas. And at the same time, that technology is making our fuels cleaner. We're not only leading the world in oil and gas production, but we're also reducing the energy-related emissions reduction. I mean, that's a story that we need to tell all around the world. Number one oil and gas producing country in the world, the number one country in reducing energy-related emissions. It's something I'm quite proud of. And what works for our nation will work for every nation. No country, no country should ever have to choose between developing its energy or economy and protecting the environment by choosing innovation over regulation. Countries can do both. And for the past two years, the Trump administration has been implementing this approach in Washington, D.C. The president has approved new pipelines. He's removed these draconian oil and gas restrictions on responsible exploration. He's supported clean coal technology. And instead of reviling civilian nuclear energy, we're now reveling in it. We're reviving it. We're moving ahead with innovative, small, modular nuclear reactors, which will provide, for the first time ever, reliable, emission-free electricity for nations that could never afford traditional reactors. So today, all of the above is no longer just an empty slogan. It's now serious policy in the United States. It means improved energy security through greater energy diversity. It means stronger economic security as costs fall, as jobs increase, as opportunity flourishes. It means more robust national security through independence. Independence from unstable and often unfriendly foreign suppliers. It means greater hemispheric security once we can empower our partners across the, the Americas, expanding peace and prosperity and stability. So how, how are we helping our hemispheric neighbors? First... We're strengthening our partnerships with each of them. Our vast resources, our commitment to responsible trade, and our support for innovation makes the Americas a rising energy force. And second, we're urging companies, or excuse me, we're urging countries across our hemisphere to support and sustain free markets. We're developing key partners to implement market reforms and other policies to increase business activity. And third, we're exporting energy to nations across this region. Minister Suarez and I were just talking about the almost unlimited opportunities that Colombia and the United States can be involved with. Today, we're exporting to 35 countries around the world. We're on five continents. Right here in this hemisphere, Argentina, the Bahamas, Barbados, Brazil, Chile, Dominican Republic, Mexico, and yes, Colombia. All of those countries are partners with the United States as we're exporting our energy to those. And by exporting its energy, the U.S. not only is exporting energy security and economic security, but freedom of choice and the benefits that go with it. We're liberating allies. 
liberating allies from the dependence on nations that would use their energy as a political weapon in contrast to such countries. The United States remains the most reliable, the most transparent energy supplier in the world. And finally, we're sharing not just our energy bounty, but our energy technology, our energy know-how, our energy best practices all across the region. So as we look into the future, as we look over the horizon, there's one thing I want to stress to everyone in this room. Continued progress depends not on one or two or three nations alone, but on multiple countries making sound energy choices across the Americas. If the people of this hemisphere, if they choose innovation, not regulation, more private enterprise, not less, I see a tremendous energy future. I see a region rising to energy greatness. Colombia is one of our hemisphere's largest coal producers. And Colombia's proven, proven oil reserves may triple, may triple with the right type of smart development that can produce resources, ensure prosperity. I see an energy boom spreading, spreading everywhere, igniting growth and fostering opportunity, creating jobs, giving young people the opportunity to not just dream some dreams, but see those dreams come reality, Prove, improving every facet of human existence. I see people being freed from poverty, rising to their potential, reaching the heights. I see families across our hemisphere receiving the life-giving power of clean, reliable, affordable electricity. In some cases, for the very first time in their entire life. This isn't just some implausible goal. This is not some pie-in-the-sky fantasy. This can happen. As a matter of fact, this is happening. And if we work together, if we remain on course, we'll be successful. Yeah, there are obstacles. Nobody said it was going to be easy. And we've witnessed some setbacks, especially in Venezuela. But in spite of it all, this can be our future. And so may the peoples in the country of the Americas come together work together, trade together, grow together, that we can unlock a better and a brighter future. Not just for our own sakes, but for the sakes of generations to come. Thank you.